another beautiful journey with partner relationship management software so prm stands for partner relationship management they've been doing this great job of you know when a company deals in channel operations they sell through direct and indirect you know channels of their uh, distributors dealers or resellers so this is something which everybody wants so like you need a crm you la large enterprises which actually deal in channel they need a prm so what exactly is this and why this is so critical for any organization because yes there are modules where you need to onboard new partners enable them the partner performance and the growth has to be very very critical communication and support has to go regular marketing details and all these things sales field operations lot of things have to work so why these all these things so this is a, one of the use case that typically salesforce or i'm partner or these kind of players actually are building in so uh, why don't we experience this thing live and we understand that how exactly if you want to get a particular uh, prm box for your organization and you are a target audience for it uh, that that has to be there for sure so how does it look like so we log into the dashboard we see that oh wow it has lot of thing components in the dashboard starting from the lead generated so you need to generate lot of leads and then you have opportunities so that means your partner channel has lot of opportunities what deals they are closing what is the health of the channel so you you derive at this number based on the goals and targets that you give and then you have lot of partners ranking in by distributed by the geography so you can have lot of things categorization of the products that you sell then active schemes that you run and sales and activities and lot of things and then you have marketing campaigns that going in and then claims and payments that you want to always track beautiful beautiful because this is kind of a thing that any channel operation would love to have and i would really love to have shout out to a lot of my existing customers who have been using our channel solutions for so long we have built it over various technologies but what is so special about it what exactly i'm trying to actually tell you about this whole game of developing these kind of beautiful uh, solutions so what we are trying to show you here is that it has a component where uh, admin can come set up their geography territory create users organization profile you can have uh, the typical cadence of security uh, your partner portal configuration can come over here lot of things and then you have a hr organization uh, training and enablement part where you can see that okay we have uh, partner onboarding we have all the modules that uh, you want to train and teach so and then we have a partner life cycle where you have a tier based system so you can actually say that these are my tiers you can define you can save config the tiers that you want to do so now i don't want to go into the details because a lot of people don't understand how exactly it works but i want to tell you that this was built using prompting so we have to experience the prompting i have done couple of use cases uh, earlier also and i know that you've been enjoying how lovable works but you need to know because every use case will give you a clarity how to use lovable and uh, while i am not saying that you know uh, it's the only first and last tool but i'm saying that yes it's a fantastic tool to give power to your imagination because what we've been building for so many years now when i see that you know these kind of prompts so i've actually said prm boxes you know this is one of the blah 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 all these things and what i'm saying that you know it is not only a normal software i'm saying that this is something where llm based agents are going to work inside now what is this llm based agent i'll give you one small example lot of time when you actually build your software solutions which ai use case is actually qualifying to be developed is very important now there is a case where when the partner submits the claim so let's say there is a marketing activity that has happened and now there are claims coming in so there is a submission of the claim that happens in the form of a small thing where you select which scheme you actually was part of then the name of the partner so if the admin is filling in so you fill in the name of the partner you specify the invoice number and everything and you give the supporting documents now this is supposed to be verified manually because there are a lot of complications in channel operations now what we said that when we were building this whole thing we said that we need a ai validator so while i just put it more focus on this thing now ai validation engine is something that particularly works in checking the invoice date so that means it has to qualify between the period where the scheme was it has to say the product eligibility so you might have built 100 products in that period but it is only eligible on 10 
partner tier validation, you are at a gold, bronze, whatever, silver tier partner. So you have to get the results according to that. So if you're not a gold partner and the scheme was for gold partner, it will not work. You need to have a duplicate detection. So you've already submitted a claim. You're now, there are more people in your team handling accounts or these kind of things and more people submit the claim. You will actually get bogged up because there are multiple submission happening. And that that's a biggest problem. Even multiple payouts happen. You'll be surprised. And then we have a fraud pattern detection. So a lot of time people in the channel partner ecosystem, there is a fraud activity that happens because then, then misuse of these things happen. Now, this is where the engine is going to say that, okay, what I'm going to do, there is a model that we are going to train. This is where it goes deeper. So it's not the lovable only that is going to work out good for you. You have to build solutions that work best in interest of the actual end customers. So you are saying that there is an agent configuration so you need to understand these critical terms like confidence threshold, auto approval threshold, response mode, what kind of a mode that you want. You want a manual review of the whole system or you want a fully automatic or semi-automatic. And then you have to say that, okay, how do you want to do? You want to do ERP data only, PRM box, combined sources. So how do you want the learning to happen? So these things actually are supposed to be built. Now, when you actually explain these things in a, BRD document or a FRD document, you know, it takes weeks and months to understand and come to this console that, hey, I want something like this. Few prompts and I was done. This is what is the magic of Lovable that I want to explain you. I'm very much convinced that this platform will definitely mature towards more seamless and more frictionless experiences to get the production ready app. But for now, what I'm feeling is that, yes, it's translating everything that I'm talking about. I said that today I want to do an ERP integration and I want to have more ERP connectors in this thing. Understand, if I would have to actually tell you, there is a lot of knowledge which is required that to connect SAP, what all fields you need to do. To connect Tally, what all fields you need to actually put up. How does it work? To connect Oracle, how does it work? It, it requires a username or it requires a client secret. These are, and then you are able to build these UI interfaces. So when we are building these kind of solutions, the knowledge, <coughs> sorry, the knowledge it has about these components, this is amazing. This is the power of AI where you guys need to actually get on. The core development will take its own journey. It will actually go through all the process of software development lifecycle. But now this software development lifecycle is AI powered software development lifecycle. And we all need to understand there is a change in the role, there's a change in the actors, the change in the whole approach. And that is what I say, the agentic approach. And when we build things behind this thing, there's a lot of things. So there is a journey planner feature. Now I'm definitely boggling you out with a lot of features in this thing, but I want to tell you that this kind of an interface, you know, which gives me a confidence that, okay, how a person can plan its journey with the partners that he's supposed to meet. Everybody in my whole ecosystem enjoyed this feature like anything because they said yes it becomes very very difficult to plan the trip and then get it executed with the right route and the journey planner so the route optimization and everybody will understand especially the channel guys will understand that when you actually run channel you have to make market visit you have to do various campaigns on ground campaigns and this is where you want solutions like these which help you build robust things where you geofence thing, you capture photo, you up, get the stock updates, and then you do, do a lot of things. So we have campaign module and all of these things. And believe me, this was done just with few prompts. And these prompts started with this. And I will now come to the prompting part and we'll quickly finish it up. So when we, when we actually gave the prompt, it said that functional part has to be built in a sequential order. You have to understand a couple of things. I'm trying to give you more and more tips, which are hands-on tips so that you, you will get the idea that how are we building. This particular piece of use case has been built with basic pure English, not with the prompting technique that I have taught you in the other videos, but I highly recommend that you should use the custom GPT free link that I'm giving you with all of my lovable use cases so that you use that thing to give prompting in the right manner, which is the clear framework. And I, I want you to comment what is the clear framework, write down each word clearly so that you resonate with me what you're doing. And whenever we are building all of these aspects, we are trying to give you more and more confidence towards this journey of, of building these kind of products in more effective manner. So 
So all said and done, I am just going to close this section and want you to give me comments about how you are experiencing lovable and give me comments and feedback in my school community.